Thank you, Mr. President and members of the Senate. Uh, Senate File 2218 comes to us from the Senate Judiciary Committee. It is a bill that addresses the penalties for illegal passing of a school bus. Uh, I want to start and describe what the bill does and then uh, make some comments about why it is so important uh, for us to pass this bill today. Uh, under Iowa's current law, the illegal passing of a stop school bus is a scheduled violation with a fine of $200. And what the bill will do is say that that is not a sufficient penalty for this offense. And it will now make it a simple misdemeanor that requires a court appearance with a fine of between $250 and $675 uh, with an uh, option for a term of imprisonment up to 30 days. For a second offense, the penalties become more serious with a fine of $315 to $1,875 and up to a year in prison. The bill also provides for additional penalties if the offense results in serious injury or a death. Uh, this is a provision that we have that applies to a number of our traffic offenses and we are adding to that list the offense of illegal passing of a stop school bus. If it results in a serious injury, there would be an additional fine and a driver's license suspension, and in the case of death resulting, automatically an additional fine and suspension of a driver's license of up to 180 days. Understand that there are other criminal offenses that also will apply depending on the circumstances, including vehicular homicide. The bill also says uh, that if this offense occurs, uh, we're directing the Department of Transportation through its rulemaking to make the offense a serious violation for purposes of driver's license suspensions. And in what I consider the most important part of the bill, it uh, provides for a study asking our Department of Transportation, Department of Public Safety, and Department of Education to assess what additional measures need to be taken to keep our children safe and to provide a public education campaign so that Iowans know this is an important law that needs to be obeyed. One of the problems with school bus safety is that this happens far too often in Iowa, in our communities, and across the country. Some studies and estimates suggest that this happens as many as a thousand times a day each day that school is in session in Iowa. And that is unacceptable. We have this law for a reason. It's to keep our children safe and to keep our highways and streets safe. Last May, there was a terrible tragedy in our state. A seven-year-old girl named Caden was hit and killed by a car while she was boarding her school bus. The car passed the school bus at a very high rate of speed. But thanks to the family and the friends of Caden, including her mother Carrie, who is with us in the balcony today, they didn't want Caden to die and have her death just be one of those tragedies that people soon forgot about. They have worked very hard to bring this issue to the attention of all state legislators, and I want to thank them for doing that. Because, because they wanted to make sure that no family and no friends experienced the heartache and the trauma that they experienced on that awful day last May. This bill will help. The law is a tool to promote public safety. But members of the Senate, Mr. President, you need to know that that's all the law is. The law is a tool. It doesn't guarantee people's safety. And that's why I believe the most important part of this bill is, the, is that public education campaign that I discussed. 
Iowans need to know. Legislators need to know. Everybody in this chamber needs to know. Iowans need to know that this is a law that needs to be obeyed. And it is only if Iowans say, you know what, that's right, this is an important law, I need to obey this law, that we will be able to say never again to the type of tragedy that happened last May and killed a young girl who didn't deserve to die. So Iowans, let's say never again to this type of tragedy. Don't drive by stop school buses. The law tells us that when you are meeting a school bus with flashing amber warning lights, Iowans, you are to reduce your speed to no more than 20 miles per hour, and you shall bring your vehicle to a complete stop when the school bus stops and the stop signal arm is extended. That's what the law provides and it's there for a reason. Our children deserve to be able to go safely on a school bus. As a parent, I know this morning I had one of my children get on a school bus. I think there are a lot of people in this room who have children or grandchildren who are getting on the school bus. And when that happens, and when they come home after school and are let off the school bus, we need to count on Iowans to obey this law. And Iowans need to know now if this body is willing to put this bill forward and pass it, and the House agrees, and the governor signs it. They need to know that the penalties are tougher, and they're going to pay the price for it. But the easiest thing to do why we have the law is it sets a standard and we expect Iowans to obey the law. With that, Mr. President, uh, that concludes my opening comments on Senate File 2218. Less than one year ago, it was brought to my attention that there were minimal penalties that could be imposed for drivers who unlawfully passed stop school buses. Today, we respond positively to the obligation placed before us, set legal standards and penalties to make such reckless behavior a serious crime. I believe there is nothing more important that we can do in this chamber than to demonstrate to everyone that the state of Iowa is committed to doing all it can to protect, nurture, and empower the children entrusted to us. Passage of this bill will be a bold declaration that we care about our kids. I venture to say that everyone in this chamber at one time or another has ridden one of those big yellow school buses. Hopefully we remember our school days as times of joy, expectation, and achievement. Exactly what we want to pass on to current and future generations. Now is the time for us to publicly deliver a strong message that safety of all our children is important and we expect every driver in Iowa to be aware of and honor that ideal. I want to thank each one of my colleagues who worked so diligently to produce this significant piece of legislation. I also want to recognize the men and women up in the galleries especially, the conscientious citizens who have given voice and a substance to their effort to bring Caden's Law to our desk today. Your ceaseless work to refine tragedy into a positive progress has been a wonderful ex example to all of us. In the cause of simple justice and in the memory of Caden Halverson, I urge all of your support for Senate File 2218, Caden's Law. The chair recognizes Senator from Lynn, Senator Mathis. As an administrator at uh, Four Oaks on May 10th, 2011, at 11.24 a.m., I wrote this memo. Dear Four Oaks staff, we are deeply saddened today for one of our Four Oaks staff in Mason City. The daughter of Carrie Halverson was killed by a hit-and-run driver this morning while a school bus was stopped to pick up children. Officers came to the Mason City campus to tell Carrie what had happened. Caden Halverson was seven years old and a first grader. Mason City staff will be talking with our kids after school today. Most of the children on campus know Carrie well. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Carrie, her family, and her co-workers on campus. We will let you know about the services or where cards or notes should be directed if you feel you want to reach out to Carrie and her family. 
Now, I'm reading this because uh, we all need to keep in mind how a tragedy like this has a real ripple effect. Carrie was devastated and her co-workers were in pain for her and for themselves. The workplace was disrupted and the psychiatric children of Four Oaks wondered why Carrie wasn't there and why our staff was so sad. We need to keep in mind that this law, while it punishes those who disobey traffic regulations, it will also give some kind of closure after a reckless and inexplicable event. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair recognizes Senator from Jackson, Senator Bowman. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise in support of this important law. In my school district at Makokita, where I'm a teacher, on any given day, my transportation director says there can be up to three to five bus violations. And we talked a little bit more and he said there was a one day study the state asked all the schools across the state to participate in. And he told me that there was eight, 1,800 violations that day. And I was in just disbelief. That cannot be correct. Now while that might not be the average or the norm, it was incredible to me that we had this kind of disobedience for the law. That day I was talking to them, they were doing their once a year emergency bus drill exiting. And while it's not much fun for the teachers to participate in that, we do and we take it very seriously. And I agree with Senator Hogue. It is a two-way street on education and good public policy. And I think uh, the Cadence Law provides for both of those. And I can stand here today as a state senator with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and be proud that we're protecting Iowa children, my children, who did ride the bus today, and just as important, my children that I work with every day in the classroom. Because the very most difficult thing to do as an educator is to come back to your classroom and see that empty seat. And the children to see that empty seat. And so, I thank you who all advocated for this bill and especially the family and friends of Caden and I know we will do the right thing and encourage uh, people to obey the law and look forward to hearing what comes from this commission or study and regarding what we can even do more to protect our school children. Thank you Mr. President. The chair recognize the senator from Webster, Senator Beal. Thank you, Mr. President, friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot begin to understand your pain. My parents had four boys and buried two of them. And my mother always said, the natural, normal course of events is to bury your parents, not your children. What I have seen here is a marvelous example of turning pain and tragedy into something useful to help prevent further deaths and injuries such as Caden's. You know, we deal with numbers and dollars and percentages all the time. But this is something that reminds us of why we're really here. It's not about numbers. It's not about dollars. It's about people. And I thank you for putting a face, literally and figuratively speaking, on this issue. Thank you. God bless you. You have our sympathy. You have our respect. 
and you have our gratitude. I am proud and pleased to speak in favor of Senate File 2218 to become known as Caton's Law. Turn to the Senator from Lynn, Senator Hogue, for final remarks on Senate File 2218. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, everybody, for your, your comments. I really I appreciate that, I, um, and I, know, um, I hope the family appreciates it. But here's, here's what this is really about, right? I mean, I talked about it. Iowans, you got to obey this law. Kids are getting on and off school buses every day. And you got to obey this law. We, we have a chance to do this right. This bill helps. It's a tool. It's a step forward. But the measure of whether this does what we all hope it does is whether Iowans obey this law. Um, with that, Mr. President, I would simply move Caden's Law, Senate File 2218, and uh, ask for everybody's support. Thank you.